Charles Gang. Yeah, just in case you ain't heard of me, they told me it was too late. But I promise that I'll be the first to speak. Most of these rappers, they fake. But you can't have your way, this ain't Burke Everybody said it won't be like this. Till they see smooth and they realize they'd rather have turkey me. Till they see smooth and they realize they'd rather have turkey me. Till they see smooth and they realize they'd rather have turkey me. Till they see smooth and they realize they'd rather have What it do, what it do. It's 903 Boxing. I'm your host, Charles J. Say, man. A uh, public service announcement. Earl Spence Jr. is the only lion in Derrick James' camp. Uh, that's not an opinion. That's a fact. Um, he's the only lion. The only proven lion. Let me say that. Um, because when it comes to Frank Martin... I really like him. Uh, I don't think he ducked Shakur. Just like I don't think Shakur ducked Devin. But I wish Shakur had took that Devin off of... Just like I wish Frank had took that Shakur off of That shit would have done a lot for Frank's career. It would have been a hell of a fight. I don't know if he's going to ever get a big fight. I just don't know. But I don't think he's soft. It's just he got to prove to me he's a lion. And it's fighters like Shakur and Tank. Those kind of fights will solidify some shit so Frank is not having a, a real opportunity to prove that he's a lion but I don't think he's soft he just gotta prove some shit uh Ryan is definitely soft um I don't think I really have to explain how he's soft for one he quit uh yeah that shot might have really hurt but he quit he didn't even try to get up he, he watched that ref count to 10 that's the softest I mean, uh Ryan was just happy to be in the ring with Tank um Shit was capped, bro. Uh, I heard he got a fight coming up in December. I bet it ain't on pay per view. Yeah, to all y'all, yeah, to all y'all that said, uh, the only reason why Tank was selling because of Ryan. He ain't the face of boxing. No, Ryan brought that one point two mil. It was Ryan. It was his social media influence. I want to see if this fight gonna be on pay per view. That's what I want to see because if you this big star that everybody talking about, I want to see the pay per view and I want to see the numbers. I want to see the anticipation and I bet they have you around a bunch of men. You gonna be in California or San Antonio, bro? You know the play. You can't sell out in Atlanta. So <laughs> that ride shit is cap, bro. I bet this fight ain't on pay per view. And if it is, that's some cap because his opponent, we don't know who the fuck he is, bro. So um. I'm not even finna keep explaining why Ryan's soft. I think most fans agree with me on that. <sighs> um, Anthony Joshua. Soft. Uh, Anthony Joshua. Completely fun with the ball. When you look at both Usyk fights, especially the first one, he was timid. He tried to fight mid-range and do some uh, scientific uh, science boxing with, with Usyk. Why you gonna fight his fight, bro? Let me tell you something. Uh, in the second fight, he tried a little harder. He went to the body. And I thought he, he hurt him several times. He just never stepped on the gas. At no point, at no point. did. And Joshua got a lethal uppercut. In no fight, in neither on fight one or fight two, did he ever land an uppercut? Did he ever try to fight on the inside? Did he ever bag Usyk up against the ropes? Soft. You soft, bro. You look like... Um, Listen, recipes, but you look like Michael Clark Duckett. Uh, what's that movie? When them guards had them shackled and he blew them goddamn flies out that woman, white woman's stomach after being wrongfully accused uh, of the shit he was accused of and he was healing white folks. That's how soft you look. <laughs> Listen, I'm just saying, bro. Um, it's like you never wanted to impose your will on... Uh, you were Samson with after her. Uh, you never wanted to impose your will on Usyk, bro. Usyk is much smaller than you, bro. But you tried to fight his fight. Soft. Because what I feel, I think he believed the hype. Uh, all these technical skills that Usyk had. Usyk is a skill fighter. But Joshua wanted to outskill him or some shit instead of outwill him. So, listen. Joshua, he respected the skills of Usyk. And he believed all the hype. He never went for the kill. There was no kill switch. At any point, Joshua could have stopped Usyk in both fights. In any point. And his defense ain't so impeccable that it can't be penetrated. So, I'm not going to stay on jo Joshua. Joshua's soft. And if he fight Fatback Fury, he going to fight Timid too. If he fight Fury, Usyk, them kind of fighters, he going to be Timid. He going to fight Wilder though. 
He's going to fight Wilder. He's going to try to knock Wilder out. And that's a fact. He ain't going to be timid against Wilder. Um, which leads me to say this. It's a problem in the black community. Uh, not just in black America. Just all around. Just black men. I'm just noticing that when a non-black fighter is considered the shit, you motherfuckers worship him. Uh, you don't fight him like you will fight a black fighter. You don't talk shit to him like you will talk shit to a black fighter. You don't impose your will. Uh, you motherfuckers are very timid. I'm, I'm going to tell you what it reminds me. It's just our culture. It's the rappers. It's the gangsters. Because all our black gangs, uh, they only attack black people. Let me tell you something. It'll be a difference if you motherfuckers were just trying to be on some tough shit all over and you go to war with the Italian and you go to war with the Russians and the Irish and the Mexican mafia and do all that shit and just be bullies to ever. No, black gangs are only a bully to black people. So... Uh, they have no smoke. I don't. I ain't heard no uh, black gangs in Texas going to war with the Mexicans. I ain't heard that shit. I ain't heard none of you gang, gang, gang motherfuckers going to war with the Mexicans over some dope. I ain't never heard that shit. You motherfuckers still trying to scope from them and shit, want them to be your plug and shit. Anyway, um, now it's, it, it's a real thing. We saw it with Jamel. Uh, black fighters don't go as hard. <laughs> I just don't get it But listen uh, Even if you ain't on some pro-black shit Every black person notice that black fighters do not go as hard When they're fighting a non-black fighter that's considered the shit They're gonna do it with in a way I'm telling you, cool boy done it It's gonna be a lot of shit Cool boy showing jury and shit He just happy, bro Black people are content with losing to other people We just don't want to lose to each other uh, Tank the same way Tank really may not be scared of uh, Shakur or Devin but he be down. He do not want to lose to them two, bro. Especially Devin. But it's Shakur either. He do not want to lose, bro, to a black fighter. But if he was to live, he'll let Inouye come up to 130 and meet him at 130 or some shit. And if he lose to Inouye, he cool with that, which I don't think he would lose. But if he had a lost to Ryan, he would have been cool with that shit. He had no problem putting Ryan on the biggest stage he's ever been on. He had no problem with it and gave him credit, never shitted on his uh, star power or none of that. Never said, bro, I'm the star of the show. I'm giving you an opportunity. So uh, Tank Tank, Tank wouldn't have been too uh, fucked up losing to Orion, but he'd be damned if he lose to Devin or Shakur. That's why Leonard Ellaby keeps saying it ain't no money in them fights, but it was money in Isaac Cruz. It was money in Rowley. Huh. But um, it's some shit. And black black fans are becoming some weirdos. Uh, you're doing weird shit. When your favorite black fighter, <laughs> cause we don't support all black fighters. When your favorite black fighter uh, is being called out by another black fighter, you motherfuckers make every excuse in the book uh, for your fighter not to fight him. You make every excuse in the book. You never do it against a non-black fighter. You never say it about the. But when it's another black fighter, just like Tank fans do, just like Shakur fans do, Devin Haney fans do it, Spence fans do it, Bud fans do it, just like they're doing with Boots. What do Boots bring to the table? It's always that, bro. But like I said, uh, Bud, you fought uh, Igis Kavalaskis, bro. You fought uh, ab Amnesia, Anesthesia. You fought a lot of shit, bro, we didn't know. You gave a lot of people opportunities that wasn't shit. So, like I said, Bud ain't ducking, but it's a thing going on with black fighters where we will never give each other a chance. But we'll we'll go to Russia and fight a fighter nobody knew and give him a chance. So, that's what I'm noticing. Okay, off the black shit, uh, Earl Spence is the only line. Derrick James, uh, I don't I, I don't know, bro. I told you I thought you went Hollywood. Um, yeah, you got some money and you became trainer of the year and everybody want to fuck with you, bro, but... You either need to get you a young assistant trainer or you just need to clean your stable up. <laughs> you know, your shit was pure and authentic before Ryan and uh, Joshua got there. Uh, it was very pure. Uh, let me tell you something. And Jamel wasn't so soft when it was just because he had to be around Earl. Yeah, I think that's the only thing that made uh, Jamel somewhat solid because he had to be around a solid fighter. He had to spoil Earl and shit like that. I think that's what kind of helped Jamel early in his career. But him and him and Earl ain't been fucking around like that. They ain't been spawning like they used to and hanging out like they used to. I noticed that. But uh, Earl is the only lying, bro. And I'm going to tell you some shit. Uh, nobody won't admit. Bud fans have been going on a, a parade. They've been shitting on... Uh, you would think they shitting on Spence. They shitting on Spence fans. All Bud fans respect... Earl Spence. That's a fact. 
Even if they don't like him. Uh, what's that boy? World Comeback Sport. Boy, he's so petty. Well, he stayed. I guess because I think Earl didn't give him an interview or some shit and he held a grudge. He 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 really don't like Spent, but that motherfucker respect him. Every Bud fan respect Earl. It ain't nobody in boxing, bro, that can give me a reason why you don't respect Earl. Everybody respect him, bro. Even the ones that shitted on him. Really, it became a thing where Bud fans really were just shitting on Spence fans. It really wasn't even Spence. The hate they had for Spence, it was really just the hate they had for Spence fans and wanting to prove Spence fans wrong. There's just been some fan shit, bro. Uh, Earl, Spence, Earl Spence fans respect the shit out of Terrence Crawford. They may not like him, they respect him. That's the difference. So, Earl Spence brings a whole nother element to the game. You don't have to like him. You don't have to like his style. You don't even have to think he that good, bro. But you can't, can't nobody in boxing say Earl soft. You can't say nothing sweet. You can't say, oh, man, Earl, Earl of folk. No, bro. We saw it. And we seen it in all his fights. But the Terrence Crawford fight really showed the dog in Earl. And the fearlessness. The fact that he would never quit, bro. He'll never quit. And I look for that in a fighter. You know... Uh, Fatback Fury got that moral victory in the first fight. How he got up from the 12th round and all that shit, and he was a hero. And I'll crack. <laughs> but anyway, uh, Earl Spence should have got a moral victory, in my opinion. He should have never got shitted on. Jamel is the one that needs to get shitted on. Jamel, I will never feel sorry for him. But you know what? It ain't the same. It ain't the same outrage. They shitted on Spence more than they shitted on Jamel. Yeah, people talking about Jamel, but in my opinion, Jamel should be shitted on. He should be shitted on like Devin Haney was shitted on. And Devin Haney didn't deserve to get shitted on. But because Devin Haney fought and never quit and fought to the end and won the 12th round after being, you know, getting pieced up in the 10th and 11th. But um, Devin Haney deserved a lot of credit for the Hardy show, but he was shitted on. Way worse than this Jamel shit. Earl Spence was shitted on. Way more than this Jamel shit. Wilder was shitted on. Way more than this Jamel shit. Uh, that little bullshit ass slap from Caleb Plant when he had his security with him. That shit was, he was shitted on way more than Jamel. Ain't nobody really just shitting on him like that. Nah, I think he should be shitted on. And I have no sympathy for him. Uh, and I heard Jamel say some shit like after this, all he want is big fights. Let me tell you something, bro. I I was on code, uh, but I'm just going to tell you. I, I'm no longer on code when it comes to Jamel. Bro, you was never a big star. Just going to keep it 100. And Jamal was bigger. He's just been an, been an actor. Jamal's name has been attached to Triple G, Canelo, Andre. He's been attached to bigger name fighters. Your name just started getting attached to Terrence Crawford. Just got attached to Canelo. Before that, bro, you were just fighting 154 pounders. They weren't stars. They were good fighters. So, you weren't a big star pimping, uh... A lot of shit, bro. Um, you know, um, your stock has plummeted. Uh, ain't no big fights for you, bro. Uh, Terrence Crawford said he don't want to fight you. I'm glad he said it. There's no big fights for you. Nothing. You might as well move to 154, fight Tim Zoo, bro. Fight Brian McDoza and do some shit like that, bro. But uh, nobody respects Jamel. Bro, you lost the respect of all boxing fans. It's people that really put their money on you because they believed in you and the shit you did at 154, bro. I thought you were the warrior of our warriors. I really thought that shit. I really thought Jamel was a warrior. It's people put their hard-earned money on you because they believed in you. You let a, you let a lot of people down, bro. You let a lot of people down. And like I said, bro, a win, lose, or draw, bro, I can, I can respect a fighter through a loss. It's how you lose, bro. Earl Spence, there was no point in that fight where Earl Spence wasn't trying to win. That's why I said the rematch is dangerous because Bud beat the shit out of Earl, embarrassed him, but he didn't he didn't take his will. He never took Earl heart. And Bud know, everybody know, there was no point where Earl looked timid. There was no point in the fight where Earl looked like, man, I just, like he saw no hope. He kept coming through every knockdown. He was never defeated right after the fight. When he when he hugged Terrence Crawford, he said, but you know we got to run that shit back. Earl, Earl is different, bro. That's why, that's why I, and I fuck with Bud. Don't get it twisted. Both of them are two of my favorite fighters. Terrence Crawford and Earl Spence are two of my favorite fighters. It's just that one one would think that I, I'm, you know, 
I try not to make a difference out of Terrence Crawford and Earl Spence because I really like both of them. I try not to put Earl over Terrence. I try not to put Terrence over Earl because I really like both fighters. But Earl been getting shitted on, bro, for being a warrior. For being a warrior. And when I look at it, he just got his ass beat up, but he didn't get exposed. See, to get exposed is to not be who you said you was. Earl is everything he said he was. I'm going to clean up this division, bro, and I'm going to fight. Earl made that fight happen. It was nothing for him to fight Keith Thurman and, and never fight Terrence Crawford. Never fight him. And he could have just used it because Spence fans would have uh, took up for that shit and they would have just said, Bud, on the wrong side of the street. Spence made his promoters uh, pay Bud. And that's why I believe Bud fans should show him a little more goddamn courtesy and respect. Earl Spence made that shit happen and he got Bud the biggest paycheck of his life. And Bud, really, you really don't... You, you getting Hollywood too, bro. Um... Uh, to. You shouldn't be talking about no other fighter but Spence, bro. You should show him a little more goddamn respect, bro. That's what I'm telling you, bro. You sleeping. Don't get it twisted. When Terrence Crawford prefer, prepare for a fight, his preparation is like no other. But you're dealing with something different than Earl Spence, bro. You're dealing with something different. Earl Spence is like me. He's very vengeful. Uh, he don't forgive shit. He remember everything. Earl Spence has wrote down all this shit. He done wrote down the shit these channels are saying. He's took pictures. He's, you know, he's making it. What the like Santa Claus? He's making a list. He's checking it twice. Yeah, he want to see if you've been naughty or nice. And he he collecting all that data, bro. And when he go in the training camp, that's what he going to use as his motivation. Not saying he going to win the rematch. I think Bud's the best fighter in the world. Uh, and I'm not saying Bud going to win the rematch. But don't slip on Spence, bro. That's all I'm going to say. And at this point, I stand on it. Uh, I, like I said, Frank Morgan can still prove that he's a lion. I don't think he got exposed against Shakur. I don't think he's a scary fighter. I don't. I don't think he wanted more money. I don't knock that. But I just I, another part of me wish you had took that opportunity, bro. I don't know if you're gonna get another one. I really wish you had took that opportunity. But uh, so you just gotta prove some shit to me. But Earl Spence is a proven lion. He's the only lion in Derrick James' camp, and I just feel like you need to put a little more value on your fighter. You need to spend more time with Spence. Your hands is too fucking full of dealing with Ryan, bro, and dealing with Joshua. And at this point, and I'm gonna tell you another thing: the relationship between Derrick James and Jamel Charlo it changed in that fight against Canelo. I saw the way Derrick James looked at Jamel. He looked at him like, bro, I'm almost disgusted. But when he looked at Earl after losing to Terrence Crawford, he was more shocked at the skills of Terrence Crawford. But when he looked at Earl, he looked at him with still respect. Like, bro, you a dog. You just lost. Derrick James respect Earl. I think he lost respect for Jamel Charlo. This is 903 Boxing. I'm your host, Charles J. With that, I'm out.